Hi, my name is Annika, and today I'm going to be talking about the Kodak Carousel Projector, specifically the 5600 model. The Carousel Slide Projector was originally patented in 1965 by David Hansen for the Eastman Kodak Company. The 5600 model specifically originated in the 80s. The technology was used in personal, professional, and educational settings for decades. While the original practical uses of the slide carousel have been rendered largely obsolete, there is still interest among film photographers in slide film because of its rich, highly saturated look. Kodak stopped production of the slide carousel projector in 2004. I started using this piece of technology a couple weeks ago when I was at home in the States at my parents' house. I asked if we had any obsolete technology laying around, and my dad pulled out a giant yellow and black box from the top shelf of a closet. We perched the projector on a chair and watched a handful of loaded carousels. A good number of pictures, but small in comparison to the huge amount of slides stored in a binder in the same closet. I had never seen the projector taken out of the closet, and my parents hadn't looked at these pictures in decades. I returned back north with the slide projector itself and a carousel of slides titled Summer 1988. I had a lot of fun pulling the projector out from time to time and fiddling with it. While it was getting it working smoothly for the most part, I still can't seem to figure out how to get a large, in-focus image projected onto a wall. The largest I can get is about the size of a postcard on a wall about two feet away. There's no information in the box about whether this is the furthest the device can project or whether I'm doing it wrong. There's also an option to display on a little personal screen that's also about the size of a postcard that pulls out on a little tray from the side of the projector, but it's slightly better quality to project it onto a wall, I found. At this point, it's worth giving a tour of the rest of the anatomy of the actual media object. There are three pieces in the big box, the projector itself, the lens, and one carousel of slides. As you can see, the slide carousel is pretty bulky. The lens slots into this hole right here, and it's kind of unsettling how hard you have to push to get it in, but that is the right way to do it. Now I'm placing the carousel on the projector. To place or remove the carousel, you have to have the carousel lined up at zero, uh, which also means you have to flick back to zero when you want to take it off, which is can be kind of painstaking. Now you just plug it in, switch off the lights, and turn it on, and start flicking forwards or backwards through the slides using the two of the main buttons. And in terms of on or off, there is a low setting, a high setting, and a fan setting. And once you've been using it for a while, you have to turn it on to fan so that the bulb doesn't get too hot and then burn the slide. Um, there is a way to set the slides to automatically change, and you can specify the speed. I just didn't demonstrate this feature, so I'm just flicking through manually here. And I didn't load or unload slides from the carousel ever, but I do know that if I had, I would have had to put them in upside down and backwards so that they projected correctly. Um, an interesting detail about slide photography is that slide film does not use negatives, but is rather recorded directly as a positive image. Uh, what is so interesting about this technology to me is that the way that it disproves a lot of moralistic arguments around social media use, or that social media has somehow corrupted us and made us narcissistic. Um, because once upon a time, people had friends and family over to their house to sit down and watch slideshows of their vacation pictures. And to me, this, is re this reflects an incredibly similar set of desires as those which motivate people to share on social media. People have always wanted to be seen, noticed, remembered. They want clout. They want to use the media technologies available to them to gain that clout and to be remembered to create an archive of themselves that they can share with others. This loosely connects to Ernst's idea of how media archaeology allows for a model of history unaffected by human bias, subjectivity, and narrativization. By working with the physical technology of the carousel slide projector, I was able to connect these kind of abstract ideas and without imposing um, any kind of artificially uh, superimposed ideas of the past is a time of modesty and humility, but rather focusing on the really practical similarities and differences between the eras. One of the most important differences I noticed between the slide carousel and successive digital technologies of performative sharing and memory is the role of quantification. 
is outlined in Glick, the shift from analog to digital is towards discreteness and quantification. When we were fiddling with the slide projector, my dad mentioned that there's no metadata with slides. Now this isn't strictly true because writing on the slide is metadata and writing on the box that says night summer 1988 is metadata. And I'm sure Ernst would argue that there are all sorts of metadata that align human senses. Functionally, the statement that there's no or very little metadata is largely true. There are no automatically recorded times, dates, locations, and yet when you're holding the slides and working with them, they have this certain material comfort and immediacy that digital photos, even when printed, lack. Even though those digital photos have all this data about when and where they were created. It's this physical connection to time and place that makes them feel like a much more immediate echo of the past and of the people in that past, even as they are amnesiac of the details. More pragmatically, when one compares and contrasts the medium of the carousel slide to digital media, the way that the measurement of views, likes, saves, quantifies memory, and scores for performativity becomes strikingly important. As revealed by the history of the personal use of the slide carousel, for example, to share vacation pictures, the human desire to be seen and remembered is nothing new. But technologies which quantitatively record your audience's interest in seeing and remembering you, which can be roughly translated as how much they care, right, are unique to a digital paradigm. In my paper, I would like to look more deeply into this relationship between the slide carousel and performativity, with some attention to connecting this relationship to later di digital dynamics of sharing and performativity. Martha Langford offers some interesting discussion on this topic in her paper, When the Carousel Stops Turning, where she presents Robert S. Nelson's idea of the triangle of performativity, speaker, audience, and image. I want this research, this concept more deeply to see how it accounts for or fails to account for the medium itself as an actor. I anticipate needing to use some broad media theory and history of photography, theory around photography, because there isn't a whole lot of scholarship on the carousel slide, but I will try to connect through, these, through the existing scholarship that there is to connect broader media theory with the specific medium of the carousel slide. Thank you for listening, and I'll keep an eye on the discussion board in case you have any questions.